Hi everyone. I want to do a short video on causality and the challenge of identifying if there actually is a causal effect. That's really been a key aim of this entire course. That's why we've learned about experiments, that's why we've learned about research designs in general and, and, and try to improve our ability to become better at identifying what can a study actually do. Because um, it's the aim of much of science is to be able to say, look, this kind of management style actually improves performance. Implementing a curtain in the Chinese mobile factory actually changes something. Um, so this has really been a key aim that we want to get at. How can a study create a causal or claim a causal effect? And what does it mean to say that something is true or something is a true story about something. And and really a key challenge is also that in the media in general, we tend to see studies being overblown, exaggerated. And this is actually what, what, what this slide is particularly about and, and showing. A lot of stuff here going on here, so let me try to, to explain it. So we have the 50 studies that has been shared the most of all the studies published in this outlet, they have generated 1.3 million social media shares. So these are scientific studies that have been shared a lot on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And what is then showing is that these, the authors of this study, they looked at the 50 studies and tried to see how strong a causal claim one could make. So if you're all the way out here to the left, well, then it might be just any kind of correlation. It might be a small sample size. There's really a substantial risk that there is not an opportunity to say that something causes something else. And we can't say if the study claims that video games causes aggression. Well, if, the, if it's just a small sample correlation and poor collection of data, well, it's just not a strong claim. And the further we go to the right, the more likely that's what the authors of this overview article then claim. More likely it is that the causal inference is generally well conducted and reported. Might be some issues and that we can't be 100% sure, but even over here in the very, very high section, it says causal inference is extremely likely to approximate the results of the ideal randomized control effect. So, so, so even out here, it, it's saying, it's not necessarily perfectly true and a causal effect, but at least we can approximate it. This is as good as it gets. Um, and as you can see, most of these studies that have been shared like 1.3 million times, actually only very few of them are out here on the right. Three are in these two categories. Most are far further on the left. They actually don't allow a strong claim of, look, something causes something else. Okay, this is the categorization of these 50 articles. Then we look at what the articles of these, the authors of these 50 articles themselves claim. And it turns out they're a little bit more optimistic about their own results. And who knows who, who is right. And, and um, that's not the main point. They're more optimistic. They think they can sort of, they have stronger claim to causality. But the key thing is really to notice the difference between what the media says. That's the bottom line. The media says that 44% of all articles can claim or have a really strong claim to causality. It says something like, is caused by, is due to, statements without room for doubt, sort of in general. But even the moderate ones here is that, well, maybe caused by seems to result in, causality is suggested, which is in, in the end 39 plus 44%. Almost all studies are, are quite strongly hinting at causality or claiming it. Even though if we go back and look at the original 50 articles, it just doesn't seem to, to warrant such a strong claim. The data does not seem to warrant the strong claim that we see here. So in a nutshell, that's actually a key challenge that I want us to know about. This is one of the key things that I want us to focus on and know about. And this does happen. This is a problem we see overblown um, causal statements in the media. And I wanted us to become better at then understanding when something can be a causal effect and also which kind of research design that enables this better. Experiments, field experiments, longitudinal study, um, carefully 
design correlation studies that might sort of at least have a better shot at, at not being absolutely on the left, but can sort of push it to the right. That's always what we want to do, push it to the right on this overview. Because as all in, also indicate before, we should not think of causality as a binary thing. It's not just true or false. It, it's some claims are stronger than others. It's not true or false as such, whether having a darker skin color leads to a higher risk of getting a red card. But this explanation is certainly getting us there. Um, the internal validity is, is fairly strong, but, but we should also think of the explanation, the causal explanation in terms of external validity. It might hold true for these European football leagues. We don't know if it also holds true for all kinds of other sports or in the future, etc. But, and then also related to this, one might go away from, from, from what we've heard so far and say, okay, so apparently we need a randomized controlled trial to really be able to say that something causes something else. And, and, and true, it, it, it's a golden standard. It's something that really enables us to get there, but we shouldn't think of it as the only way of, of, of getting there. And let's think of this public private school example that we had in the study cafe. I won't go through it in detail here. Just want to remind you, this is the um, study that we're talking about. Does putting your kid in private school improve their performance? And we saw this overview here um, where the claim is, does putting kids either in public or private school improve their academic achievement? And, and, and it was then clear to us when we assessed it, we don't know if the children's ability before they even start school is different. So it's actually the children's ability that then decides, well, clever kids get into private school um, and, and clever kids also get the higher academic achievement. So that's an alternative explanation that it turns out to be the cognitive ability that decides. It doesn't really matter which school they go to. And in addition, we also talked about, well, maybe it's the parental resources. It's, it's focusing and, and, and having the resources to be able to study at home. Maybe it's the, the values that are being put on education. Maybe parents um, that send their kids to private school just value education much more, which then means they end up performing better. It's not the school type that makes them perform better. It's just because these two things are, are correlated. So again, the conclusion could sort of be, oh, okay, apparently we need a randomized control trial. Do we need a thousand kids that we randomly put into a public or private school and then look at them 10 years later? That would be quite something. But if we now collect data on cognitive ability, the resources of parents, how high an education is valued, let's say we actually collect some kind of survey data on that, then we test the kid's ability before they start school. We test and, and question how much parents value education. And we have this information and control for this information in a statistical analysis. Well, in the end, we could then show if and how school type has an effect on academic achievement. We don't have a randomized control trial. Um, so, so in principle, there might be other things that we should have thought of, but at least we can, in a carefully designed study where we have data over time, we tr can try to get closer to a conclusion. Um, and this is really what we want to become better at, being sure that a scientific claim is credible. So if we've done all this kind of data collection, we can be more sure of our conclusion, not necessarily 100% sure, but that's all we can do in science is to sort of push our certainty and reduce our uncertainty. And that's what we do here in this particular example.